Okay, we're good. Yeah. All this meaning to order. Oh my okay, he's chair now. We <laughs> make room bay up. Yep. Uh, this meeting of the uh, Red Municipal uh, Light Department Board of Commissioners is being videotaped at the RMLD office at 230 Ash Street, Reading, Mass. The meeting is being videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. Let me just read our uh, code of conduct, which you read at every meeting. Uh, the RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions and comments from the public be directed to the chair, that all parties, including members of the, of the RMLD Board of Commissioners, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board and responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the, the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comments or ensuing discussion. Okay, so that takes care of the opening. We, um, in terms of introductions, we have George is from the CAB tonight. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, George. Okay. Do you have any comments that you want to start off with? I mean, here. No, we usually start promptly our, our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, George, there's a new chair. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, from one chair to another. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's feisty tonight, Phil. <laughs> oh, that, hurt. That, hurt. that hurt. That hurt. That hurt. Okay. We'll do better next time. <laughs> All right. Um, liaison, Mr. Enzinger is here from the Board of Selectmen. Welcome. Welcome. Say, Dan, and then just wa welcome. I'll listen to hear what you have to say on the instruction okay. motion. Okay. All right. Very good. And then uh, I see nobody here for the public comment, so we should move on to the chair's report. Okay. I want you to note that I've changed this. It's no longer called Chairman's Report. It's called Chair's Report. Mm. Good. So <laughs> from now on, it'll be known as the Chair's Report. It's appropriate. Um, the first thing we have on the agenda is the, the updating the structural motion that was that was uh, made last Wednesday, last Thursday. Uh, the, really, the gist of that motion was to look at the return to the town. Um, in terms of that, um, I do want to clear up. I do want to state a few things that were misstated. Um, basically, somebody said we were an ATM on Ash Street. That is not true uh, on that. And also, there was a statement made that a commissioner actually appeared in front of the school committee and said we were flush with cash. I don't know what commissioner that was. and It didn't happen during my time at any time. So I don't know what commissioner that was. How long have you been in? 31 years. Oh. 31 years I've been in the commission. Um, so I don't know if that, where that statement came from, both of those statements. Uh, there was also a statement that made that was made that the department is worth 250,000, yeah. 250 million. That was a tribute to a town official. I don't know where that number came from. Um, I doubt it's that number at all. Uh, there is one item that you know the town manager did mention to, at the meeting that he did bring up the issue with the previous general manager. The previous general manager never brought it to the commission. Maybe that's why he's a former general manager now. But um, that unfortunately never came to the commission, and I wish it had when it was brought up uh, in terms of that. Uh, one of the things that I'm proposing to do, and I promised to do at the, uh, at the, at the meeting when I spoke, is that uh, I would call a meeting of the uh, subcommittee that's existed since June 9th of 1998, which uh, Jeannie uh, did research for me, which basically consisted of two members of the commission, two members of the CAB, one member of the Board of Selectmen, Reading Board of Selectmen. Now, I don't care if the Board of Selectmen want to have two members. That's fine with me on that committee to meet and discuss and review all the numbers and come back with a recommendation because we need to have all, all parties involved. Um, the commission would represent the department. The CAB would represent the ratepayers, who are, who are the main stakeholders of this. And the uh, uh, Selectmen would represent the town of Reading. So that way we had all the, all the state, all the people in in, in one place and to come back with a recommendation to look at the issue and to come back with a recommendation to, to all of us in terms of that. In terms of that. Now I talked to I I assume that being the chair I'd be one of the members of the commission. I would like Mr Mr Stempeck to be the other member if he be if he'd be willing to I'd do be that. Happy to. Right. Participate. George I will let you decide among your members who you would like to be on the commission. When would are you like looking to, be? to have this meeting? Um, I don't know. As soon as we can get it the uh, I think we need to report back something by <coughs> November town meeting, right, by the November annual town meeting. Right. Okay. So I think that's something that I'd like to do so we have some sort of report on that. Okay. All right. Dan, go ahead. 
Mr. Chairman, it would be possible to get a, a copy of the original charter for this group so we know exactly what they were charged with. Uh, Certainly can. This. Certainly can. Can you ask, have Jeannie send, put all those papers that she put together for me and, and send you all the, the information and on that? We'll take up at our next selections meeting how many we're going to appoint. Right. Wonder. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Can I get a copy of that also forwarded to me? Yes. Thank you. Can we, Tracy, why don't you forward to all the members, both the CAB and all the members of the, of the, of the commission, and make five copies for the selectmen? <laughs> Maybe six. Bob want a copy, too? Uh, emails. Fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, very good. Um, any other comments that we have on that at this point? There is you know, there's one other comment I want to make. Um, the final vote was taken when there was less than a quorum. For those people who left, um, far be for me to lecture somebody, but I'm about to do that. Right. For those people who left, they should be aware that, that was a very, very uh, far-reaching discussion that could affect this department very much so. And for those people that left the meeting, um, you know, I don't know how they feel they can represent their, 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 their constituents in that case. So my own personal comment. I could have called a quorum call, which would have stopped things, but I decided that would not be the way to go at the time. So um, anyway, we move on from there. Any other comments from any other, other board members? No, I agree in principle. I, I think the fact that it's an instructional motion, I mean, in, you could also say it's probably not productive to be uh, discussing things at 11.30. <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> right. at, well, that's uh, the way it went. At night. But yeah, so I think that uh, this is a good opportunity to do something that's built into the Right. Charter to review it so and right. give yeah. the cab an opportunity you know, and I, to chip into it. And I, I have discussed the, the you know the formation of the committee with previous boards of selectmen. They never chose to actually uh, call this committee meeting at point point. I know. I think the last person I discussed with was uh, selectman uh, Anthony. I believe was the last person I discussed this with um, at the time. So. Um, uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, do we need to? Is there any need to? Uh, have any formal voting in terms of the, uh, the board commission? Yes, what I would like to do is have a motion to officially appoint uh, Mr. Senpak and myself to the uh, subcommittee on reviewing the return to the town, if you okay. would, please. Second. Is that second? Been moved and seconded. Second. Discussion? Yeah. Anybody? I see none. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries 5 0. Okay, very good. And you'll carry back the message, George, from back to the CAB. I will. I will. I know uh, that I spoke to our town manager and one of our selectmen members, and uh, uh, that was a little concerning for us also. Yes. Um, so uh, I was uh, kind of sent here to get a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. We're aware of what happened at your town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we'll, we'll wait and see how this works out. Okay. Very good. <coughs> All right. Great. As soon as we get the committee form, we'll we'll call a meeting and get rolling on this right away. I actually have the wording of the motion here if anyone wants to hear it. Uh, yeah, I think it would be valuable for George. Why don't you go ahead? I, I have this on my phone. I took it off the TV screenshot. Good. Uh, move to instruct the Board of Selectmen in light of the town's difficult financial situation to study the Reading Municipal Life Department with an objective of increasing annual revenues to the town of Reading. There was originally a, a final phrase which was struck by amendment, which said including the possibility of a sale in the longer term. That was taken out. Yes. Right. And I think it's more than, more than time. More than time to look at that. I mean, that was set, the, the original uh, item was set in 1998. You know, it's been a long, it's been almost 20 years now <coughs> since that was set. So more than enough time. All right. Very good. Do we want anything else under that? And if not, then we'll move on to the reorganization of the, the subcommittees. Um, I looked at the subcommittees. Basically, we have three basic subcommittees. We have the Audit Committee, we have the Policy Committee, and we have the General Managers Committee on that. I don't see any reason to discontinue any of these um, at this point. I think we should keep going on that. So um, I'm on the Audit Committee. I'd like to stay there on the Audit Committee. Mm -hmm. John is on the Audit Committee, too. I don't know if you want to stay there or whether you want to move off into one of the other committees? <coughs> we probably should let someone else, uh, we should switch it up a little bit, I would think, uh, just okay. for training purposes and for uh, mm -hmm. getting some, some fresh How many blood. members do we need for audit? Usually the audit committee is two members of the subcommittee. 
Now I'm also an official member of the uh, Town of Reading subcommittee. Right. It's on an audit committee. So in terms of that. So Tom, do you okay, want to? Sure. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So the audit committee will be uh, myself and uh, Mr. O'Rourke at that point with the, with the audit committee. On the policy committee, uh, Dave, you've been the chairman of that? Yeah. Do you want to continue? Sure. Okay. I'd rather rotate off of that. Okay. Um, oh, you don't want, you want to leave it? Sure, I'll be, uh, okay. Yeah, you'll be, you, you're okay. So that leaves uh, one spot open, so. <laughs> oh, I'll jump on that. Yeah, okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And the general manager's committee, uh, I, you know, being the chair, I should be on that. The two that were on that last year were uh, John and Dave. Um, I don't know how. Do you want to be on that, Dave? On sure. That? Okay. Yeah. Dave, you get a choice of staying on or going off that committee. Of the which one now? The this policy. Is the, this is the general manager's review. Sure, committee. I'll stay on it. Yeah. Okay. So very Thank good. You. We have three members on that one. We have three members on that one. Okay. All right. So, so who's the general? It's Phil, Dave. Phil Kelly. and the two and the two Daves. Two Daves. Okay. Phil and the good. two Daves. Dave. Policy would be Dave. Dave, me. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. You got it, Tracy. Okay. So okay. This, 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 it's the two, the two Daves and right. And two John. Daves and John on the policy committee. All right. Okay. Um, the only other committees we got is the accounts payable. Who is who is the accounts payable this month? Do we know what the rotation is? Accounts payable this month is Dave Hennessy. Dave Hennessy. I'm going to be sending out an official thing with all that. Okay, if you would. Well, there's some of us that can't for yeah, the three I, year. Yeah, I made a little. Okay. Graph yeah. showing all right. Who's in red now because they had three years in a row. Okay, and we have the payroll, the payroll committee too, and I'm I'm the first back since I lived the closest to the to the building here. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm currently doing. Right. Payroll except uh, Dave Talbot. He can't be. He had three years in a row. Yeah. You served <laughs> your country well, man. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> it's too bad. I know one of the things the audit committee did was actually meeting with the, uh, I don't know, the town accountant or the, or I don't know, they met with Bob. Did, did, did the audit committee meet with Bob on a regular basis? I know Mrs. Soli used to do that. Uh, in speaking with Bob, he said uh, it was not regular, mostly at the year end. Okay. So, d d uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yeah. do we have. Uh, we have uh, um, committee chairs for each of the subcommittees. Did I hear them all? Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm the chair. I'll be the chair of the audit. Yep. Dave Hennessy's going to stay as the chair of the uh, policy. Yep. And um, I'm the chair of the general general manager's review committee, being the chair. Okay. Okay. Good. good. I think that's good. All right. Very good. Anything else, Tracy? Um, to fill no. all the gaps. We got all the gaps filled. Um, I'll send out an update. Okay, very good. All right, so our, our next item is the, uh, Mr. Talbot has the potential of the telecom. Right. Thanks. Go ahead. And, uh, and thanks, Dan, for, for coming tonight. It's great to have the select uh, board members here. Stay until about quarter round. I have no meeting. Okay, well, this is <laughs> my, my big <laughs> for a few minutes. But so the, the town meeting instructional motion was, um, you know, the, there, there are things that the board's been talking about uh, in a number of contexts about how we can generate more revenue, how we can do more for our towns. One of the areas that I think we need some better awareness of are, is what we could do with our fiber optic uh, telecommunications network. Um, I think this is th a thing that isn't very well understood. Uh, the mileage on it is, again, how many is, what is it? How many miles is the, aren't? I don't have the exact number. Okay, it goes through all four towns. And uh, over time, it was built about 15, 20 years ago, and over time, uh, lease leasing activity has increased. So without even trying, we've seen revenue increased from leasing of our fiber optic network. Colleen, I believe it's 500,000 now we're up to, or is it close to that? Um, it has the potential for that. Okay. It's not there. And there's, and there's even more interest in increasing um, the leasing activity. So it's the one area, it's the business that we don't even really acknowledge that we're in, but it's the, it's the one area where revenue is growing. Um, I, in my day job, I study municipal light plants and what they can do in their communities. Out of the 41 in the state of Massachusetts, about 15 are in the telecommunications business, and data is an area that's growing. Uh, High-speed connections are things businesses need and institutions need. Municipalities, school departments all have growing needs, 
and many of them use their municipal light plant as the means to provide various services and cost savings um, to the municipal government and to area businesses. Um, this is an area that, because there really hasn't been a pull from the communities that the department has not been in, um, I think for us to do more in this area would re require engagement by the governing bodies of all four towns, the schools, to really understand and see what's being done elsewhere and see what the department can do in this, in this realm. Um, some of the things that are done, uh, often people jump and say, oh, this means you're going to do home service, but actually much of it falls short of that. It could be leasing like we already do. It can be, uh, again, serving municipal or school agencies, saving money versus however it's done now. Now, I understand Reading, we're already pretty good on that. I don't know about the others, but there can be public safety applications where there's wireless backhaul that the police or fire need, and however they're doing it now, the municipal light plant can do something. Again, I don't know what the answer is. I just know this is a thing that other light plants do. Um, you have, you know, you can expand your network if, you're, if your revenue is growing on your existing loop. The, it begs the question, well, what if we expanded network paths or capacity? Is there even more leasing revenue and even more things we can do? It's one of these things where if you build it, you know, they will come. We've seen that already. So I think this is something that, you know, it, it, it kind of is the discussion we should be having about how we move into the next century, what, what, more, what things we do. The department's already done, and Colleen has already launched a small study that happens to be in Wilmington um, to see just as a, just kind of spitballing, what would it cost to hit businesses in Wilmington? What, you know, we have a loop already going by um, business areas. We have it going right through the business district in Reading and in the other towns. You know, what can we do to, to offer business service that's cheap, fast, um, so these are, this, is a, this is a topic that I think we ought to embrace. So I, that's what I just wanted to raise. Our, we're already seeing revenue growth in this business that we don't acknowledge being in. I think it's time for us to set up a, for, you know, a formal division, and, and we should have a study that's across the towns and engage on this topic. Um, so they, that's 23 miles. 23 miles. So that's a lot, and it's, it's marketed by the, it's the, the company that leases it from us, Light Tower, markets it to uh, other providers and they they provide services over our network and it's something that we should be looking at should we be doing this directly I mean especially Wilmington um, you know you've got the industrial area and the business districts we're, we're right we're going right through there and um, it's done in many many other light plants are, are doing things with their fiber optic network to benefit industrial and business areas so that's enough said. Um, I just wanted to bring that to the attention. I was going to circulate a memo just kind of summarizing what I just said uh, in light of the instructional motion, also briefing on what the board has discussed to date on this topic and what Colleen has already done to get us, you know, get our toes in the water to study this area. So um, w the department has a full plate to, 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 it's not something that staff, I think, can push. It has to be the community's understanding the topic and pulling. So that's enough. Really. Can I ask Dave a question? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Dave, one of the things we went to the seminar at Harvard University, I think it was a year ago, one of the things they say about fiber optics is that um, it's the future. It's not technology that's going to go away soon. Can you just touch on that a little bit? Sure. Explain I mean, it again? Because I think there's misconceptions like, hey, maybe in five years, right. fiber won't be needed anymore. Why is that not the case? It's not the case because fiber is a, is a passive communications medium when the capacities, you, you probably know this, so if you do, but maybe there's somebody out there in TV land. It's the electronics on the end that increase its capacity. And also, people, another sort of misleading thing is, well, wireless is going to replace fiber. You know, there's the reality is that when we move to 5G, we're going to have a lot more smaller transmitters with higher capacity but shorter ranges. They will need fiber backhaul. I think we've already had some telecom companies coming to us looking to put stuff on our poles. Um, they're going to need, they'll probably want to put their own fiber up. But the point is, these transmitters need fiber backhaul. So there could be another opportunity there. Is what, what's, our, what's our play in 5G? You know, what is that play? What should we be doing? Um, so I don't know if that answers your yeah, question. It does. But it's, it's thought to be a 30 to 40 year, um, you know, equipment life that really is f as future proof as you can get. There's not another, it's not like, you know, fiber does replace copper, but it's not like there's a something else beyond fiber. And I'm, Dan, I'm probably saying things you already know, but um, so, yeah. Thanks. Does that, yeah. as a select board member, does any of this resonate with you? I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, again, this is a very, very tiny, f 
tiny piece of the overall revenue picture at Amal D. Um, but okay. that's all I got. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Dan. We'll to manager. I just want to mention, Dan is a former member of this commission, too. Hmm. Well, so he did serve, so. <laughs> May I ask what, y what years that was? 2002 to 2005. So. I do still have my clock upstairs. <laughs> my meter. Upstairs. Your meter. Your meter. Your meter. Your meter. Okay. Now, while you're here, there's a lot of things going on with the system, a lot of upgrades behind the scenes that are critically necessary that Colleen has been leading the way and having the system be more reliable. And um, so. All right. Very good. Thanks for coming. That's good. All right. We move on to the general manager's report. Colleen, you're up. Yeah, I only have one thing quick so we can get to the um, budget. Is yep. just that uh, the NEPAR annual conference, I just want to let all the commissioners know that that's this year, uh, mm -hmm. August 20th to 23rd. Um, I'm not sure if I would be requesting to go. I have a, a last child going to college. It might be that week. Yep. Um, but uh, I'll have Tracy um, circle that around. Okay. And, um, yeah, I've, and I've already booked the hotel room. Okay. <laughs> So mm. I'm definitely there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go this year, too. Yep. I'll check my, my schedule as well. It's yep. Newport. Newport, Rhode Island is where it is this year. Okay. If you'd All like right. me to ask permission now, if I can attend, but I just don't know if I will, but if it would be. Sure. I, sure. I think I think it would be appropriate to, to uh, have a motion to authorize uh, Colleen to go to the NEPA conference at this point. So okay. mm -hmm. do you want to make that motion? Sure. Um, motion to... Uh, a grant to Colleen O'Brien, her general manager, uh, permission to attend the NEPA conference uh, starting August 20th? Through the 23rd. the 23rd. Is that second? Second. All right, now I understand it's under her contract. She has to give permission to the board to go to these things. So, any discussion? Uh, All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Oppose that motion carries 5 0. Yep. Very good. And we go to the operating <laughs> budget. Can you give us a setup and, <laughs> and then we go. <coughs> The, um, the operating budget. Uh, we'll be doing the capital budget tomorrow night. Yep. And uh, our main presenter on the operating budget tonight will be Wendy Markowitz, our chief financial accountant. With backup. <laughs> from Moral the support. Operations support by Parento, <laughs> <Back -up. laughs> <Back -up. laughs> how many people in Korea with the power supply and back up from the band. The team. <laughs> okay. Good evening. Good evening, Good Wendy. Evening. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're just going to follow the slides and go in the order that the slides are. So we're going to start with the six-year plan. And uh, basically, this is a high-level uh, profit and loss statement. And you're looking at um, your sales revenue. And we are trying to estimate a decrease of a half a percent every year. And that's consistent with uh, the prior year, six-year plan. And when you go down to the operating expenses, we're also staying consistent with a 3% increase in operating and maintenance expense and general administrative uh, expenses to bring us down to a bottom line um, rate of return. We're trying to reach our 8% <coughs> rate of return as close as we can get um, and staying conscientious of the impact of our, on our customers. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll move forward. So this is the, uh, the detailed profit and loss for the budget for fiscal year 18. Jane, do you want to take the revenue? Oh, yep. So uh, for uh, fiscal year 18, the operating revenue uh, is estimated to come in at $26.3 million. Um, that is, uh, can occur in one of two ways. Um, if we have increased sales, uh, that could be attributable to the increase in revenue or uh, the, the uh, second option is uh, a rate increase. Uh, over the last 10 years or so, sales have been consistently flat and decreasing to a certain extent. Uh, so in this budget, we've assumed flat growth. Uh, so the, the result of that increase would be an actual um, rate increase to our customers of all, all classes. Uh, we've been working on a cost of service study. There was a presentation to the board on April 20th. Uh, there was a presentation to both the CAB as well at their April 2nd meeting. 
um, and there's going to be a follow-up uh, final recommendation to the uh, CAB on May 24th and then we're going to once we get the CAB's recommendation we'll bring that to the board for uh, for full approval um, they're looking at rate increases across the board anywhere from three and a half to a little short of seven percent and that really depends on customer class and usage um, and so there's going to be variations we're looking at implementing some changes within the industrial class of how we charge um, capacity and energy um, one of the increases that you'll see um, a little further in the budget is the increase in capacity um, th from this fiscal year to last fiscal year um, it's currently estimated that there's going to be an increase of four million dollars uh, to the department uh, in capacity alone um, and so those costs are passed through to our customers uh, the department does not make any return on that however um, it's a four to five percent increase for every customer class uh, and so that equates to the, when we give that range the bulk of that is related to the capacity then you add transmission onto that and we're getting you know anywhere between four to five percent in just power supply costs alone um, and so those will be presented um, to the CAB for uh, approval on the 24th um, but it equates to the 26.3 million dollars Okay, so we're moving along to the operations and maintenance expenses. And I'd just like to point out that the um, percentage of change reflects 2017 budget to 2018 budget, just so you, we don't get confused on that. Um, in the operation and operating and maintenance expense area, a lot of the fluctuation may be due to um, working more on operating or capital expenses this year. So, you know, I'll go through each line item mm -hmm. and highlight that, but that's going to be a lot of the change. So we'll start with uh, the FERC number 580, Supervision and Engineering. We're up 26%, and that is including uh, energy engineering labor, I'm sorry, with overtime, and department expenses, including vehicle and training. This also is uh, anticipating two new engineering positions, okay? So we'll go to 581, which is... Um, the station supervisor labor with overtime as well as vehicle and training there's an increase there due to that shift from uh, capital to operating workload basically this year well incoming FY18 and then 581 we have your line general expenses which is basically your um, your line department um, it's training employee time off and weather related time that they are um, working in-house versus out, outside on the field. So that went down 29% because they're going to be doing more capital work this year. Uh, the control room is just your station operators with overtime and uh, department expenses. And you go down to 585, your street lighting. This is your routine patrolling and street lighting, uh, some repairs and maintenance of your team men. That's going up 16%, uh, a little more repairs and maintenance than we had anticipated in the past. Then you have your 586 meter general expenses. That's your meter department with overtime and expenses being a vehicle and training as well. That's going down 11% due to some capital projects. Your materials management. This is your purchasing labor with your stockmen and some educational expenses. There's some uh, telephone expenses, copier expenses in there as well, and your department expenses and there's that's a um, it's shifting down about three percent and that's approximately due to a temporary hire we have uh, then you have your 590 maintenance of structures and equipment and that is your station tech labor with overtime training vehicles and supplies and we are looking to add one station tech operator this year okay your maintenance of lines overhead, that's pretty much staying stable. That's your line overhead on, in the field with overtime. You have your police detail in there, your tree trimming of approximately $1 million, uh, vehicle expenses, and this is all, all of these are net capital, the net cap, uh, of the capital portion, okay? Um, then you have your maintenance of lines in your underground crew. So you have uh, underground labor with overtime, your vehicles associated with that, supplies, and that's going up about almost 59% uh, due to more operating expenses versus capital. 
and then your maintenance of line transformers about um, where that's just an estimate in case we run into any kind of um, transformer leaks or anything to that sort or we have to um, get rid of some batteries you know we hazardous waste okay and then you have your 596 your maintenance of your street lights now this is your team men um, actually changing out bulbs and fixing lamps uh, in the field and that's going up simply because we have underestimated in the past what their uh, the amount of need out there okay so then you move down to your general administrating expenses and uh, so your meter readers this is the first one 902 your meter reading labor and your meter department expenses um, this has to do with uh, some of the contractual uh, increases in retros and expenses 903 is your customer collection so this is your labor uh, education and supplies for accounting customer service and IT departments and we are looking for one uh, possibly adding one IT uh, billing person which is why we're increasing almost to 11 percent then you have your uncollectible accounts which we usually hold steady at hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars just in case we reach that number of uncollectible accounts 916 is your energy audit and conservation that's um, going down less than one percent and that's your integrated service labor education supplies and the conservation program so that's basically reserved for those programs okay then you have 920 your administrative and general salaries this is your general managers labor your uh, human resource community relations uh, cab your eno director facilities manager and some of uh, business directors time as well and uh, there's a 10 percent decrease mostly um, due to attrition and some um, long-time employees no longer with us okay your 921 is your office supplies and expenses and that's going up uh, about a quarter of a percent just to stay in lines with our product cost your 923 is your outside services being your legal fees your consulting fees audit fees and some um, software consulting that's increasing almost 13 percent and that's mostly due to our vendor fees what is that explain what vendor fees are I'm explain. sorry meaning illegal fees increase yearly you know uh, by the hour consulting fees increase by the hour audit fees S software, software mm -hmm. is increasing okay <laughs> when the, uh, I'll just yes. make sure I'm following so when you're giving your net changes, you're, you're, lo you're looking at your 2018 budget relative to... The 2017 budget. Yeah. So not what's actually been spent, but what we budgeted in 2017. Oh, as opposed to the... As opposed to where we are in actual eight months actual and four months budget. Yeah. I, I, well, I'm just... Yeah, I guess I would have thought the, the eight actual four budget would have been a better... Uh, depiction I mean I guess you can use either one but is that how you usually do it budget versus budget um, I'm not I'm not sure exactly how it was done last yeah. year I don't know does any You're other saying else? it's better to have more actual and small mental estimated to sort of put reality into the into the picture right yeah well I mean in terms of what because it's uh, one is what we're really looking I think to measure is our actual spend in 2017 and how much that's going up for 2018 but the only reason I'm sorry Tom the only reason that I would think that that wouldn't be as accurate is yep. because you really don't know how much you're going to spend in the last four months and sometimes you're trying to rush to get projects done or um, you know the timing differences so we are trying to meet our budget for 2017 yeah. that is the goal always so that's the only reason I yeah. would think <laughs> yeah I guess it's a, and maybe the, there's probably a different experience in, in some businesses, the budget tends to be a <laughs> right. an artificial number that right. uh, yeah. is met or not met. So I guess as long as if the budget tends to mean well, as we stand right now, we're pretty on target. Yeah. With so budget. in that case, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So that I think that's why we decided to go this yeah. way. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So then your property insurance uh, 924. That's exactly what it is. Uh, insurance on the properties. And then your uh, 925 injuries and damages. This is some property damage claims, workers' comp insurance, disability insurance, and uh, it's gone down 8%. It's going to go down 8% due to um, a subrogator that we have insisting with RMLD claims. 
926 employee pensions and benefits. These are um, the only problem with this is that at the end of the year, as you've seen, there could be a last minute uh, pension calculation that could change this number drastically. Prior year, the uh, auditor changed it by $402,000. So we can only stay on target with what we know, but not what we don't know, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's due to that unfunded liability, that pension liability we've been discussing. Yep. Right, which everybody is suffering yeah. from, right? I mean, right. all businesses are. Right. And then 930, we are miscellaneous general expenses. Now, um, this is kind of a catch-all. That in anything that doesn't fall under your um, your office supplies or your outside services, so stuff like dues, uh, education supplies, drug testing, background checks, um, that your, a lot of your um, community relations, giveaways, promotional items, and your cal historical calendars that we do. So there's many, uh, <coughs> many different categories of expenses that go under 930. It's going to go down about 5%. I think we, we've been making some uh, changes in our community relations area in particular to lessen the, uh, the, the costs. And then your rent expense looks to be uh, staying the same based on our contract. That's JCM Realty Rent. And um, that does not include snow removal, which is under 932. Your oh, 935, I'm sorry. 935 is your maintenance of your general plant. So this is your software, ITRON website, uh, your GIS, SCADA, and engineering software. This is going up about 56.6% uh, to improve the efficiencies while using automation, as we've discussed. You know, we haven't had a lot of automation, and we're moving uh, in that direction to help, uh, as Colleen would say, the software help us do our work. So that'll be more of a sunk cost. You make the investment, and exactly. then in future yeah. years, it goes down. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And then your 935, the maintenance of building and garage, that's your uh, heating oil, gas, your paint and carpeting, water, plumbing, and your snow removal and ground services, and that's going up about 14%. Yeah, Wendy, just a couple of questions. Sure. On uh, the, nine th the 931, that's the property out back here, the garage out back, the rent. Uh, 931 is actually, it's, it's this property, is that not correct? Barbus. The Barbus. The Barbus property, which is, right. the, which is Phil, the property out behind us. Okay. Do you have a breakdown on the number between the health insurance on, on, uh, and what's the retirement on 926? Do you have the breakdown? I don't think. I do I not have it in front of me, but I can get that to you because we do have those numbers. Okay. All right. And the health insurance is increasing, just so you know. So that would, that would cause um, some increase there. Mr. Chair, can I make a Sure, comment? go ahead, if you would, um, please. I know this is a new format for everyone this year. Mm -hmm. um, for coding, Federal Energy Regulatory Committee accounting principles are, are what we use in every utility. Mm -hmm. So while Wendy's going through each of the, I mean, you can always look it up. So like 593 is overhead lines and maintenance for every utility in the nation. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why when I came here, we weren't using FERC accounting. I mean, we were for the DPU report and stuff like that, but it's something that puts us all as employees on the same page so that we always know what is going in each bucket. So um, I appreciate you going through what sure. each one of them are. I think in the future, you'll just see the FERC coding and you'll start to get used to 593 overhead, you know, 930 mm -hmm. um, engineering services or something like that. So I hope this makes it a little bit helpful. Yep. I know it does. Can I, okay. Phil, can I just ask? Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Wendy, how much do you anticipate health care costs going up? Did you say the health care plan is? I don't remember what uh, Beth is Ellen it? said. She, she had sent it out. Do yeah. you remember? Does remember what Beth Ellen said about the increase in the health care? She just sent out two. And yeah. I didn't pay yeah, yeah, I was just curious. Did you know from the town? Uh, yeah, about health insurance. Yeah. Oh, it's the same as the town. Yeah, yeah it's the same yeah. insurance as the town. Four and a half percent? Yeah. yeah, believe it or not. That's not bad, really. Yeah. The town is not self-insured, are they? No. no. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Uh, is this done using the Munis system that we use, or is it a special FERC base? So this is Great Plains okay. that we use. And uh, I should remember this answer, but if money needs to be moved from line item to line item, maybe across O&M to general administrative, uh, whose authority is that to do? Is that the GM, or is that the board? GM's. I believe it's the GM's authority to do that on that. Yeah, we actually don't do a line item budget. Oh, okay. I mean, we try to estimate, you know what I mean, where 
we're going with this, but you're not going. No. No, but the reports we get will show what each each of these lines is send, spending. Yes. On a, on a monthly basis, so we can question it. The general manager would certainly be wise to let us know when, if things get transferred around. <laughs> well, we re we report to you monthly, and we show you right. you know compared to the mm -hmm. budget and yep. whatnot. Um, Once the I mean, there's a little bit of room in the FERC accounting. Um, just a little bit of room, but but once like Wendy and I agree, this is what goes in each bucket. It never changes. Mm. Um, so you typically wouldn't move things around. So what an accountant and a general manager might decide is, okay, a, when you build a GIS system, do you put it in a 300 account, which is capital for tangible assets, or are you putting it into um, maintenance of general plan? So you have some of these discussions where the FERC accounting allows it to go into both, but then once it's decided, it stays there. You yep. generally don't have anything that moves around because each each of the FERC accounts is identified. So um, that makes sense because otherwise it'd be apples and oranges on a year-to-year -year basis. Yeah, and it, it's right? when APPA does their reports, it's you know they're they're reporting on the accounts. Um, so everybody's talking apples to apples. Good. Okay. 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 Very thank you. Thanks Dan. for coming, Dan. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so then we move further down to our depreciation expense, and because of our uh, a plant, our plan is increasing. Our depreciation is increasing. We're um, we're depreciating plant at three percent. We're staying consistent in that area currently. Our voluntary payments to the towns, they're increasing by 3.8% about, and that, again, is based on 2% of our net plant, so our plant goes up, so the payments go up. Okay. And, and, that's, and that's what we refer to the above-the-line payments. That's right. The above-the-line yes, payments. Yes, thank you. They go, to the, um, they go to the four towns. Yeah. And your interest income, uh, it seems a little odd that it's going up 20%, but it's simply because it was underestimated in the past. And uh, if you look at your, your budget to your actual... Uh, that's why we're, we're increasing that. So that's our cash reserve money that's getting interest income on, or your depreciation fund, your rate stabilization, sick buyback, and your customer deposit fund. Then you have some other income, and this is basically your MWIC flush of funds, your scrap metal, and there's other small areas um, of money that comes in. And your return on investment to the town of Reading. This also includes your loss on disposal of plant at the end of the, of the year. So I don't want you to confuse the dollars there. Um, and the return on investment is based on the CPI index, as we've discussed. And that's going up about 1.4%. And then your interest income is your interest to, to the customers when they uh, close out, when they request their customer deposits. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your bottom line net income, we're targeting $4.1 million or a 4.56% increase. And then if you go down to your rate of return calculation, you add back your um, return on investment to the town and your loss on disposal. And then you subtract your interest, interest income. And in that other income number is it advanced in aid of construction of about $400,000. So your net $6.1 million as compared to 8% of your net plant, $6.3 million, gives you about a 7.75 uh, rate of return. So we're pretty close to the 8%, uh, yes. which is the max we can charge anyway. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions on this? All right. So then we'll move to our third piece. And... Um, I think everybody likes this one the most. Mm -hmm. This is this is our actual uh, projected fixed and semi-variable cost spreadsheet. So this kind of gives you an idea of uh, our fixed cost and what we have available to kind of uh, move things around in. So if you look at your the right-hand column, FY18 percentage of total budget, about 74% is um, fixed to our power cost. Okay, your fuel, your capacity, and transmission cost. Then you have your depreciation expense is about 4.6% and your return on investment to the town of Reading, 2.5%. Then you have your above the line town payments at 1.5% and then your disposal uh, losses about less than a quarter percent. So 82.68% are accounted for and basically, you know, 
those are fixed and will not move. So with the remaining remainder of the budget, we have 17.3% to move across the, um, the various categories. And then you can see as you go down your labor and your employee benefits and pension, you know, that's about almost 11% right there. Okay, and then each, I'm not, I'm not gonna go over each line, but yeah. as you go down, you can see uh, we've, we've gone ahead and separated uh, each category of expense, if you will. And you can see like tree trimming is almost at $900,000 and your overtime is about uh, 700, 760,000 is less than 1% of your overall cost. And you continue to go down and it gets lower and lower and um, that's what makes up that 17%, which is your semi-variable cost. So the board and uh, CAB budget increased a little bit for travel um, purposes. Yes, I think I spoke with um, Gene Fody, and it was budgeted. It was supposed to be budgeted fifteen thousand for the CAB and fifteen thousand for the board. So I made sure to target that number. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, and that covers our. As we talked about earlier our attendance at the NEPA conference, right? And, and training we want to take, and I believe the the CAB has in the twenty year agreement a set amount of which they're to be funded each year. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have for that presentation. All right. There's really not a lot of uh, <laughs> discretionary spending. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I think that's why everybody likes this spreadsheet because it really puts it into perspective, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Right. Right. And this, the semi variable cost, the two biggest ones are pretty fixed as well, right? right. Yep. Well, based on your labor contracts. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Go ahead. How many new staff positions are contemplated? Okay, so I do have that sheet. Um, you don't have it as a handout, I apologize. But I do have that sheet, the same thing we prepared last year. Uh, we are looking for two new employees in FY18. So essentially, in the past, we have, uh, and I can hand this out later, I can get you a copy of this. We have um, previously approved vacancies that you have uh, approved in the past, but due to, um, you know, not having the talent out there. Colleen hasn't been able to hire those individuals. So uh, that's about seven previously approved. And of the previously approved, uh, previously approved, I'm sorry, we are looking to add another two to that this year in FY18. So we're intending to fill a couple in FY17. By the end of 6.30, we're looking to fill two more positions. Can I add to that, Go Mr. Ahead, Chair? Please. I just want to add that, yes, some of it is um, acquiring the, um, the talent at the skill level due to lack of succession planning over the years. So we're not in a position to take, you know, completely green people in every position. We're looking, it, it, it kind of meshes in with the organizational study we did. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is also, um, you know, we're, we're rewriting every job description. We're rewriting, well, not rewriting, we're developing career development programs to develop each of the employees for every one. And each one of those has to go through their respective union. So it's that and uh, trying to find the talent together that's cr creating the, the lag. Um, you know, that, that process with the union is, is very, is, they have to time. review each of the job descriptions, determine if it's a you know a change in working conditions and and so forth. So there there are a number of reasons why they've um, it's been taking a while. I guess my question was: we have a certain staffing level with this budget. Are we contemplating having additional staff above, or is it just these are not replacement to people who've left? This well, is I'll tell you this, Dave. We have 74 employees currently, and uh, if we were to staff what was already been approved and the two that we're asking for we're looking for 83 employees okay. so we are we are so looking seven to plus add nine employees the division ha uh, the department has typically had approximately 80 to 83 employees over the past and we've had a number of retirements and things like that and they hadn't been replaced so i think when wendy says approval it just means that when they've retired or left you know we we've we've kept those on the books intending to fill them is part of the organizational structure. So it's like a reserve that you've kept. 
basically right. for them. What are the two new ones that are separate from that? The two new ones are two new engineers. And what is that position? For that just in general, it's. Yeah. But is not, not am I in incorrect? I'm sorry. Well, not not exactly because oh. like Ken, uh, you know, retired, so would be replacing Ken, and then there's. Correct. I'm looking right now for the number. I'm sorry. Um, in the re in the reorganizational structure, there was two additional engineers added, but they were added and approved, I believe, two years ago. Yeah, I stand corrected. I apologize. It's one station tech operator and one billing okay. uh, individual f under IT. So where I'm going with this is in line with the comments I made earlier and the fact that we have increasing telecom revenue and that we've had some comments about maybe as a formal matter, accounting matter, there should be an, a telecom division to reflect the reality of what's actually happening. There is telecom revenue coming in. That It might behoove us to have expertise in-house in this area, even if it's just one experienced person who knows this business, which we don't have right now, which isn't a criticism, it's just a statement of reality, that can be identifying opportunities and suggesting things and bringing them upstairs. Okay, can I add to that? Yeah, I, I believe I sent you an email, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be very careful with this whole topic. I mean, this, this right. small study where I'm getting my feet wet yep. for $9,000 has to be paid at, you know, at the bottom line. It can't be paid above the line. And we have to be very careful about spending electric division funds on this. The, the fiber optic loop was built solely for the purpose of electric. It doesn't mean you can't study it, but you have to have, this is why I had asked and we had met on the strategic um, committee or meeting mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and to try to put things into perspective of where we're going so that we make sure that if we do larger studies um, that we're doing it in accordance and in, in staying within the parameters of what is allowed. Fully um, agree. I mean, nobody wants to do anything that's not allowed. I mean, all I'm saying is, you know, we do sort of by accident have this telecom revenue coming in to least data uh, capacity on our fiber optic line and that's it's, it's, a, it's a happy it's a happy thing it's a good thing and it's a reflection of something that c is growing and could continue to grow we've had a lot of conversations about the many things you can do and I don't know how we, we advance that unless a there's a pull from all the governing bodies and it's, there's at least one person on staff who can answer and help work and identify opportunities low-hanging fruit uh, give us some expertise on leasing um, I'm not saying do it tonight. I'm just saying in, in the next year or two that we're thinking along the lines of developing one person at the department. That if I may, David, yeah, I, go ahead. I, I, I think that will be part of the output of this committee that we right. just formed tonight sure. uh, with the recommendation for finding new revenue enhancement areas. And I think that could be a, a really, really interesting one. And we know it's there. Right. The question is what kind of incremental revenue could we get from right. it? Right. And, and uh, so I, I think we probably agree with you. Then, then there's a tactic of how do you implement it. Sure. Right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's and kind of a circular. We members, we've got to stay within the four corners of the building here. Well, right. I mean, well, we're. We can't go outside of that. I don't know what that means exactly, but I mean. Well, you don't want to do anything that we're not. We're, we're in the, we're in the, as. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say we're in the wires business. We're in the wires business. <laughs> I knew that. We're in the wires business. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, and 15 other light plants are also right. in the fiber optic business, and by accident, we're in the we're in the fiber optic business too, without acknowledging Agreed. it. <laughs> so, we have a half a million in fiber optic uh, telecom revenue right now. I'm just I'm just going to keep saying it. So I think we should. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I, so we can you know, I have to con I have to clarify that again. I know the fiber optic system was built exclusively for the electric company, right. and any revenues that the electric makes from surplus of an electric fiber loop uh, goes to the electric operating funds. Okay. And any time you would change that, you would have to develop another set of books. That's right, you would. Um, you need, need a telecom right, division, so which you know, most MLPs have. Right, so if we do a study in, on the strategic and we decide that's the direction we're going, and I'm, be, I'm being told do this, then uh, I will make work to make sure that we are keeping the money straight and we get another set of books and tax consequences or whatever needs to go down that uh, thing. And that's just a study on the ball. 
after the bottom line. I, I get a little nervous if, if we're thinking that we're hiring people and, and putting things into job descriptions that, that are... Okay, so the, the spirit of what I'm saying, and then I'll end this, but the spirit of what I'm saying is that we don't have any in-house expertise on this topic, and it would be good to have some. And whether it's a contract position for two years to get us, help us with this area, or whether it's a position and there's all the rigmarole with that is not my area, I don't know. But I'm just saying, bring it in and let's figure this out. And I, and I do disagree with you that it's an electric fiber optic loop. It's a fiber optic loop. And we have, it has electric purpose and now it has another purpose that's telecom only and that's telecom revenue. But um, so I think it should be treated as an accounting matter as telecom revenue and that we should, be, we should be thinking of that and we should be acknowledging that we have revenue growth in this area only. <laughs> And you just have to be careful that you don't get into the point that you have to set up another entity, and if you do, it has to it's be It's just a books. It's just books. It's not an entity. It's books. No. No. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I okay. disagree. Mr. O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Phil. Uh, I, I think at the highest level, I think, Phil, what I'm hearing you say is <laughs> w as we move along, along with making decisions on pilots and any decisions in this area, obviously you need to account for headcount uh, expertise, however you want to phrase it, which I think is only logic. It would be foolish if we decided to go down a, a path and pursue this, then we need expertise. So right. I, I don't think that's a, a negative, but I, obviously there's a lot of clarifications that, and that's the work we have to do as right. we right. go through. Right. Phil, can I ask a question? Go ahead, George. It's got nothing to do with fiber optics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Joe. I just want to come back around to this. Yep. <laughs> uh, nine employees, uh, am I correct? Is that what your, your shortfall is right now? Yes. And so it, you obviously have noticed some deficiencies, I'm sure, with that. It must be kind of tough to operate. I know my department uh, is running short, but not nearly mm -hmm. like that. But the number that you carry for the salaries is you're still carrying that pay for those nine employees. Yes. Uh, so it's been over a year you've been running with that deficiency. W where does that money go to? It just sits in the operating fund. It's going to stay in the operating yeah, fund. You haven't made any adjustments, or you just carry that? It just stays. It's like your checkbook. The money just stays there. So that extra money from last year carry forward? Just yep. It was Those a, nine salaries. Can say carried forward, but it actually just sits in the the cash sits in the operating fund, and then when we fill the positions, you know, then we disperse the cash accordingly. Okay, so last year's funds go to a general fund. I mean, so that has, didn't it's just get expended. It's called the operating fund, so it's just okay. your, like your basic checkbook. I think you know where so I'm going to. Yes, it's it. non-restricted. Okay, the funds are non-restricted. I guess that's the right way to say it. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Very good question. I'm good. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the operating budget? Are you looking for a vote tonight, or, or do we going to take them both, both tomorrow night? What do you what would you like tonight? I, I think you I think you had elected or approved and voted to vote tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. Okay. That that's why before sure. I was chair. <laughs> Still yeah. Right. No. I just want to provide some back. I think the. Yep. The origin of it a few years ago um, was, uh, in fact, I think we were discussing it in one of the cab meetings, is if you vote the either one, but tonight if we approve the operating budget and then tomorrow night we have issues and we want to spend more, I mean, there is some correlations, so we don't want to approve something and then undo it <laughs> because <laughs> it, it locks yeah. us up. So right. I, I think this allows us the opportunity to revisit it if we needed to as a result of the okay. CapEx discussion. All right. Any other discussion or questions on the operating budget? Oh, well, good, good job, Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. No Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. All right. Uh, we have a procurement request here tonight. Um, actually, Tracy brought up the idea that I don't know whether we want to put this in abeyance tomorrow night because this does, well, we haven't voted the capital budget at this point whether or not the, the oh. board is willing right. to take the vote tonight and pending approving the capital budget tomorrow night, I just put this in abeyance and, until tomorrow night. What, what, what would the commission like to do? Is it only one, Phil? Yeah. It's only one that I have here. I think my feeling would be just to approve it tonight because yeah. it's sort of in the... Yep. Well, okay. Just, okay. I'd, but, but I'd, I'd rather do them tomorrow night. Yeah, go ahead. To, to get, what? I'd Who rather do them... Uh, proposal. Hold on, John. I'd, I'd rather do them yes, tomorrow sorry. night as, as it says on the agendas, but and I don't know why we'd... I'd like to hear both, frankly. Okay. 
So you want to, you want to hold it off, man? I'm, I'm I mean, if it's, a, if it's all the yeah. same to you. I'm, I'm indifferent. I'm indifferent to it. Either. Either. There's tonight. not only one other item we could just get off the, the list. Because right. I'd like to, I, if I may, I'd like to Go hear ahead. both before we vote. That'd be my, that'd be my okay. feeling. I have no problem. With that. Oh, no problem. I have no problem with that either. Yep. Yep. All right. I Very think good. That, that makes sense. All right. Great. So the only thing we have left then is general discussion. Mm -hmm. So our meeting tomorrow night is our next meeting. Um, then we have not set a June date yet. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is set like the same day every month, mm -hmm. like the third Thursday or the third Wednesday every every month. I don't know how everybody feels about that. I thought it kind of was. Wasn't it always Thursdays? I, I so it was like too. it was usually yeah. later in the month, and it was usually a Thursday. Usually, the way it went was it was a, like a week or two after the cab meeting. Yes. So right. That was how it was done. Right. Um, so, where do you guys do yours? Uh, it's a Wednesday. It's usually uh, I think the third Wednesday. So it's in the middle of the twenty-fourth. So the third Wednesday of the month. Yeah. The third Wednesday. So if we meet, say the fourth. Either Wednesday or Thursday of the month. That's do a doable thing for everybody. What's that? I think pretty much. Uh, yeah. Second. Okay. Second. Yeah, Say right. says second. They do the cab second Wednesday. Is second of Wednesday month. or the third Wednesday. Of the second month. Wednesday. Second Wednesday. So okay. So what do we need? We need a, you need a week between the cab meeting and the, oh, this right. board meeting. So we'll do the third. We, we just um, we were trying to set it up so that you were getting your finances right. You know, and and not ha being a month and a half behind. Right. So that's why we said if the cab had met like the first, right, the first two weeks, and the board met the third week, right. something mm. in that range, you'd okay. be getting your your finances right. quicker, okay, and consistently, right, you'd consistently. be getting the same set of okay, books. Okay, so that sounds fine. So why don't we set? I mean, here we go. Twenty years ago, we set the third Wednesday every month <laughs> as the, as the meeting day. So you want to do that, or is it better for Thursday night for people? Thursday seems to. You, John, you have Thursday, a, Thursday's yeah, much better for me. During the summer, Wednesdays are fine. During the regular rest of the year, I, I'm on okay. a con tennis contract. So okay. it costs me money to. So let, yeah. Yeah, right. we don't want to Wednesdays cost you money. are tough for me. <laughs> right. So why don't we do the third Thursday of every month? Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's set that as the, the date. Yep. So Good. we get everybody's mindset. Okay. That yeah. Be, uh, June 15th. Right. Okay. June 15th. June 15th. I think that's the earliest we can have our meeting in a month then. Yes. yes. Mathematically. Mathematically, yes. Uh, there you go. Yeah. I, um, that's the one. Uh, I mean, it, it's just me. I will be out of the country on that particular date, just that date. Okay. So if, 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 if we don't need me for a quorum, then uh, that's okay. fine. Fine. All right, well, let's just Can set it. Can anybody take shorthand on all these? We <laughs> <laughs> get to go so many places. <laughs> all right, very good. Well, he's a professional tennis player. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Tournaments are not always stateside. <laughs> not very professional. All right. <laughs> okay, so the only other item I got on the agenda is the uh, executive session. Is there anything we need to discuss? In I just have one quick question on the strategic meeting. Yep. Is it a committee or a meeting? I just want to clarify because we did we didn't mark that down as a committee. No, it was the strategic was a meeting of of the of the commission. It was a regular meeting of the commission. Okay, and that's so what they will continue to be. That's correct? what they will continue to be. Okay. It'd be a meeting of all of us at that. Okay. Is there anything you say we need to discuss, or is that no? Okay, Mr. Chair. Sure. Yes, uh, I was going to request. I think the last time we issued the uh, committee uh, listings, we also provided an update on the. On the staff, you know, the key staff and board, the contact numbers, uh, just to, yeah. to have that. That's right. useful to have it maybe right. as part one document. Good idea. Okay. Good idea. All right. Anything else? Do do I have here a motion to adjourn? So move. Mr. Rock sure. moves to adjourn. Is that second? Second. second. Hello? Third. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries. We're adjourned. You can't be mad at me. You're on my evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you just can't sell electricity over. You can't sell electricity over fiber. You, I respectfully disagree. Okay.